Thank you. I think most of you can identify with the problems illustrated here, be it elephants, lions, or anything else. The problem is how to solve the how to solve the solution in a sustainable and humane way. My solution is a virtual fence. As the name suggests, a virtual fence is not real, but it must still exist in the mind of the target animal. So how do you turn this magical thing into reality? A row of scarecrows may be considered a virtual fence. It's a row of dummies. Um, looking like people, whereas a beehive fence is real. Now, well, scarecrows don't work because they, um, they stand still, do exactly the same thing all day long, which is nothing. And for a virtual fence to work, it needs to have a threat. Now, the horror movie Jaws works well because it has a very real threat and it's working on the unknown and has a very scary signature tune. Now, horror movies work because they introduce a threat and have a signature tune which elicits a fear inside you and you never know when the murderer is going to arrive. A virtual fence works exactly the same way. It's a horror movie to your target animal. It knows what the threat is. The real thing is that it must be unpredictable, not know when it's going to arrive. Now, a territorial boundary is like a virtual fence. It must inherit a land, must instill a landscape of fear. The landscape must have a permanent boundary, but it must be unrealistic in terms of time. Now, our virtual fence was introduced um, by Gordon's Bay they came with a problem, and I suggested installing the fence between the dam and the sea. It has two main elements. We have an information system, radio collars, relay information, and a response system with action stations playing music and firing bear bangers. The baboon's position is relayed from um, his low-power signals to a gateway and from a gateway via GSM to the internet. Using low power, it's, um, the batteries last much longer. The virtual fence, the boxes are only put out when you receive an alert signal, and then the music is played and controlled, the horror music, from a remote on the hill. Now the baboons try to break through 13 times. The, um, Action stations were used 11 times in the first six months, and since then only two more times. So there's no evidence of habituation. The virtual fence, since it was first installed, has been 100% successful. Uh, the baboons never sleep near Gordon's Bay and spend the majority of their time east of, in the eastern half of their range. Since in, during last September, the baboons spent two weeks foraging just south of the virtual fence, but never closer than 250 meters. This therefore suggests that the real landscape of fear has been instilled along that fence, and they should stay gone forever.